pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll try to keep this meeting short tonight so that way everyone can enjoy this beautiful day. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, we might as well stay here then. No. <laughs> um. <laughs> you won yesterday. That? You won yesterday. Did we? Five four. Cool. Oh, um, okay. So, has everyone had a chance to look over the agenda? Is there any uh, potential uh, additions or deletions? No. I would uh, mm -hmm. reserve the. I want to think about. It. Okay. We always got more time to add stuff. I'll make it as a public comment. Okay. Motion to uh, approve the agenda. Who made the motion? Hey, Wally. Bob, second. Favor? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, did everyone have a chance to look over the uh, the meeting minutes? Mm -hmm. Are there any comments on those? Yeah. I'll add a comment that thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Al, for doing these minutes. You know, from in the past and in the future, I'm grateful that I don't have to do it every month. Going <laughs> 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 to get a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Approve as written. You need a second? Second. Okay. Moving on. Um, open public comment. Seeing no one here, I will uh, close open public comment. And if other folks come in later on. I will make a, a public comment. Okay. As a member of the bike path, but as a member of it. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. There's a, there's a group of folks. <laughs> They're members of a, a little church down the street on Church in Meridian, St. Thomas Lutheran Church. So the pastor came to us and asked if we would put in a bike path to connect his parking lot to our bike path, and we had to tell him no, we couldn't do that. Installation on private property, and we didn't do so. And Sean is a great, great guy with a, and leading a wonderful group of people in his flock. He raised the money and did it himself. And he did a beautiful job of it. So this is a public community shout out from Wally Posey Ask Citizen to the folks at St. Thomas Lutheran Church for the nice job and the great gesture towards our community and the bike path committee. Thank you. Thanks, Wally. Oh, those comments. I mean, it was amazing how quickly that thing came together and how sharp it looks. Oh, it looks great. They did a phenomenal job. He really did. I was able Oof. to snap some photos while we're on the lazy ride and put those on Facebook. So now the whole world knows about it. Hats Hopefully. off to St. Thomas. Okay. Old business. We'll start with the Baradour and walk the path. Wally, what do you got for us? We continue walking the path towards August 22nd. <laughs> the... Uh, Things that remain to be done, uh, I will tell you that Madam Fijil has made a beautiful flyer. She can share it with us if she, if she wishes to, to put it on the podium out there to, to let folks get a sneak peek. I've asked her to give a copy to TV12 so that they would also run it on, on the television. Uh, again, I, I've been telling the world that this is going to be a busy Saturday in August for us with a lot going on. Uh, Baradour has got in excess of 100 people that will be riding through Gross Hill. And we will have our Walk the Path event with Greenways Open Space, primary hosts with the rec department, but not certainly cert not only the hosts, because Bike Path Committee is going to be there, DPS is going to be there. More of us will be there. There, there may be a couple of more additional things, surprises coming down the road. Uh, right now, the biggest problem I see is weather, the need for a grill, and a need for a half a dozen volunteers from all of those folks. 
but we promised to make it a fun event. Uh, Gary, Barry the guitar guy, Barry Van England, did a wonderful job last year, and I think he's, he's revved up to do it again this year. Uh, what a great public servant that guy is. He does these things for free, and uh, we really appreciate that. So let, let, let's get our folks in this community together that day. Show them what Grozeal is really made out of. We have the best bike paths in the world. We have the best greenways and open spaces in the world. We're working on making our, our roads finally to the point where they're going to match and, and be better than most of the roads in Wayne County. Uh, we've got a lot going on. Come on down and celebrate with us. Six that means you out there. <laughs> so the six volunteers, who do you have in mind for that? For that? <laughs> six volunteers? Mm. Uh, you know, half anybody a dozen around volunteers here? And, and I'm asking. Absolutely. That's what a volunteer is. Mm -hmm. As the date gets closer, I'm sure that we will, or everyone will yep. step up for it. Brian, last year you were there with your kids, and that was a great thing to see. You know, Aaron was there with the kids. And, you know, some of us that don't have little ones anymore will be there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be the head weenie cooking the hot dogs, all right? Uh, because my partner, Tom Malvesto, has chickened out as being a chef. Instead, he wants to ride a bicycle. And he's participating in the Baradir event. So, Tom, if you're out there listening, I am picking on you. Uh, we're really ginned up about this event, those of us that are working on it. And, uh, the, the things that we're going to have is a half a dozen tables. Uh, Bike Path is going to want to have promotional items there. The, the DPS will have promotional items there. Cliff will have brochures out for, for Greenway's open space. And the rec department is, is a great host at that site. So we just, you know, if give us good weather and six or seven volunteers, we're going to have a blast that day. I, I had a great time last year. Good time. Kids love doing the, you know, the singing. Pop, popsicles like last year and, uh, you know, the, the squeeze pops. And uh, You can have a medium rare or a rare or a well done hot dog. And you want your stripes vertical or horizontal, <laughs> let me know. Options are limitless. Absolutely. And all the mustard and ketchup, you can squirt on them. So it sounds like we're pretty squared away for this year. Uh, I know that we want to make this you know, an annual event. I was talking with Jane uh, last weekend, and she was mentioning about that she's volunteering with, with pals, and they do you know, a Walk the Pet uh, event. I think this year it's out in, is it Belleville? or? Uh, yeah, at the Centennial Farm. Oh, it's at Centennial Farm. Okay. So maybe we can meet. No, they can walk. Yeah, we're wondering about incorporating that into this to make it an even you know, larger event in the future. I don't know if the Baradour is going to be on the, the same day next year. Or not. Well, I don't know if it will be either, but I don't think you're going to see 110 dogs running down Meridian either. So <laughs> let's, uh, well, I, I'm just teasing. I, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with, with doing that. Yeah. Anyone else have any uh, questions, comments for Wally and Walk the Path or Baradour? Yeah, um, I do, as a matter of fact, um, just wanted to bring it to the commission's attention. Um, are you aware that the island-wide garage sale is the same day? Yep. Okay, because there will be a lot of traffic because of that. And what what are we going to do as far as, as the safety of the riders? What are we going to be providing? We're not going to run any of them over. <laughs> you know, we are going to well, learn in this community and be the example where bicycles share the roads with vehicles. I'm not, we're not doing anything over and above normal traffic safety. Common sense from the Baradiras is expected. They're going on training rides. They've been talking about it. Um, the, the, the community isn't going to be drag racing that day. No, I understand, but we get a lot of people that are not from the community. We get a lot of off-island traffic, and I have driven the roads during, you know, the garage sale, the, the township-wide garage sale. A lot of people are looking at maps and not sure where to turn that aren't on the island, and so it's just those reasons that I just have concerns and for the safety of the bikers. I, I have those same concerns, but it's every day. I okay. think that I think that the Bear Doer Path, which I help participate in, puts people on bicycles down Grozeal Parkway both directions. There won't be very many houses having garage sales there. It turns onto the short stretch north 
on Meridian and it goes to Macomb and it runs down Macomb, a 25 mile an hour road, which is a good service. And I don't think that people will have a problem uh, commingling with bikes. When we get to East River, we make a left and we're gonna be riding on the outside of the, of the east side of the road uh, with our roads all the way to Horse Mill. Horse Mill's newly f re resurfaced also. Another beautiful road with very wide accommodations to it. We'll make a left-hand turn on Meridian to come back to the free bridge. Uh, you know, th that's a route that has a minimum amount of potential garage sailors. So that's, that was part of the consideration, Don. But, you know, we're not, we're not going to put a cop every 50 feet. Alan wouldn't have anything to do with that. <laughs> well, no, no. Just I was just concerned with the cars that park along the street, you know, on the shoulders of the roads where, obviously, we're going to be biking. Mm -hmm. you know. I, I share your concerns. I mean, it's legitimate to have. And But as Wally had said, you know, we want to make sure that we're, um, you know, promoting the island as, you know, as usual, it is a pretty uh, safe place to be walking and biking. And as Wally had mentioned about the Baradour having over 100 people biking, and then we're having more people out, uh, you know, walking and biking in the paths. I, it's a concern, but it's also, you know, more safety in numbers. It's amazing how perceptions change when you're, in, you know, myself included. When, you know, I'm driving in a vehicle, all of a sudden I see. A lot of people walking or biking, I'm like, whoa, what is that? It gets my attention. That's better than any sign, uh, potentially even you know, better than uh, you know, having a cop out there at the, uh, the intersection. So um, you know, we can live and learn, see if there's ways to improve. If you do have some suggestions, you know, you know, this is the place now to talk about it or in the future. We've, we've also spoken to the police department. Joey Porcerelli is involved with this. Also, if I may say, uh, the Baradura you got 100 riders, these are guys are professionals, and they don't get strung out for a long distance. They ride in a pack, and they're getting it pretty good. So it won't be strung out for a mile or so. 100 riders would be within a few hundred yards of each other, you know, it's just a large pack of riders. Any other questions or comments? Um, during the Boudoir, I'm going to be doing the BPAC table, like how we do at the Island Fair. Probably not the travel, but papers and stuff. And I'll also be passing out the uh, tour deal postcard. Okay. Great. Maybe we can have some of the stickers as well. That <laughs> As far as I'm concerned, Jane Fiegel is Mrs. Bike Path, Gross Hill. <laughs> <laughs> is our biggest cheerleader. Absolutely. So the next item I get the privilege to introduce because I was fortunate to be you know participate in the the lazy ride this last Saturday. And you know I worked it, but I was also a participant. It was the first time you know being at it. And I have to say it was an amazing event. And with that, let turn it over to Jane to talk a little bit more about uh, a debrief from the lazy ride. Okay. I was so lazy. Hello, you can hear me? Okay, I was so lazy that I had 15 people following me all over the island. So we met, we, had, we started about 20 people. We want the public to know that they can come and go whenever, if they like, get tired, if they have to go to the bathroom, they can come and go. So we just, and because the, uh, the police at court prefer to have 50 bikers, they were not there at the time, but we were fine without them. Thank you, police department. We went to the, our brand new bike path at the high school, middle school. It was paved, it was nicely done. Hoffman, we went to the Nature Conservatory on the tip of the island. Very nice, very relaxing. And, uh, and the video is in progress, and I'm gonna post it in a couple of days. So they can see what we did, and then we're gonna have our last one next month. Be there. <laughs> August. Correct. 10 a.m. Bob, I know you were part of the event as well. Do you have anything that you want to add to Jane's comments? Well, other than it was a good time, we had a good turnout. Uh, and I think every time the turnout will get larger and larger to where I think this in time will become a successful event every summer. And I'm proud of Jane for doing everything that she does for it. She's doing a great job. Thank you. And Donna? 
Donna, any comment? No, it was a, just a wonderful ride. I really enjoyed the first ride, the second ride. Look forward to the third one. Now, it was a little hot last Saturday. I, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hide it. <laughs> but it was really nice biking because you got that little breeze. And um, and I found that there's a new path because of Jane um, through Gray's. You go by the high school and behind the high school. And that brings you mm -hmm. out on too. And I never knew that was there. So thank you. Yeah, and after Brian let me be aware, the first uh, uh, the first lady ride, I want to keep it to Island Residence because I wasn't sure how many people would be there. I went off Island Library, by shop, and we had people from New Boston, Trenton, Newport, and Wyandotte, and we're going to have more next month. So I'm going to be passing out more, so I'm going to have to ask Kirk to make more flyers. So it's working. I mean, we're, we're getting people from off Island to come experience Grozeal. And you know, hopefully some of those folks can say, hey, you know, maybe I can move out to Grozeal. Maybe I can come and you know, frequent some of these uh, the restaurants in, uh, on Macomb Street. And as well as we're letting folks know, hey, there's a new park you know, on Macomb at Lions, Macomb Lions Park. And in the future, you're going to see more stuff happening there. So it's like we're, we're trying to make this synergy happen. And I think slowly but surely it's coming together. That'd be fun. <laughs> Anyone else have comments, questions? Well, since our last meeting, if I may say, on uh, we had the safety town that the rec department puts up, and it was truly a learning experience to get the attention of a room full of preschoolers. But it was <laughs> fun, enjoyed it. I think they had fun with it, and I also enjoyed it. But uh, it was truly a learning curve, and talk to them about wearing their helmets and signaling and how to cross the roads and stuff. But uh, the rec department put on a phenomenal job there with the safety town. And uh, it was a lot of fun with all the preschoolers. Cool. Bob, how big was the turnout for that? Uh, that day there was probably 27 preschoolers, and I was surprised <laughs> at that many. And they were all blast. And every one of them was just like, my bike's got training wheels, but it, the kids had it, really enjoyed the information I gave them and stuff and brought the bike in and showed them and just talked about safety and what to do and what not to do, you know, but they enjoyed it. The rec department did a phenomenal job with it. They really did. Great. That sounds great. Now you have a new appreciation for kindergarten teachers, don't you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Absolutely. <laughs> so did they get to keep the, uh, the copies of the... Uh Whatever. Yes, they did. I brought a lot of literature, enough for all the uh, kids to take home, and um, they made sure that it was all put in their book bags, and they were taking it home to the parents. It was a fun time. It, was, it really was. I'm looking forward to doing it next year. <laughs> Thank you so much for volunteering for that. And I also passed out the um, safety booklet that we got from Langston. Yes. I dropped them off the day before. Yes, you did. Thank you for that. Made sure they got all the literature. I think their literature beforehand was from the 1970s, and it was like one page. It pretty much said bicycling is fun. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> a lot of safety. Before bicycling, bicycling or cycling has become a hit because it has really taken off, not just in this community, but in, in the United States as a whole, or actually in the world. Mm -hmm. People have really gotten into cycling. Cool. Next on the agenda, we have a spot for a Tour de Eel update. Jane, I know you, you've been going to some of those planning meetings and had some success about mm -hmm. getting BPAC to be a, you know, more of a part of that. So do you have anything that you'd like to talk about? Well, so far as of last week, John told me they have 87 participants signed up for it. I'm not sure which lot they're going to take, but 87 already signed up. Um, they got financials like Gorner Ford, Priority, um, Big company, Down River, big company, and he's getting a really big sponsorship. Um, I have been passing out with Donna at Slovo, passing out um, postcards. He let me borrow a shirt, two of the yellow, blue, navy blue, and we, we had a big poster on, on our back of our bike. And I don't want to say, here, 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 side of the bike. Oh, okay, here. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> so it was finally passed out over 50 postcards at the last uh, level. And our next meeting, if you'd like to participate, is end of July, Wednesday. And he already uh, put on our logo on the website, so you already have been recognized. And Bob might participate, too. Yes, absolutely. But you just brought up something that I found very interesting. You had a sign on the back of your bike at Slow Roll. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's something we should incorporate on our Lazy Ride to promote our Lazy Ride, because when we're doing our Lazy Ride, I'm always yelling at people that are near us on the bike, join us next month. This is Lazy Ride Gross Hill, or even the pedestrians, I'll shout out. If we could maybe do a little sign and attach it to one or two bikes. This is Lazy Ride that. Gross Hill. We, uh, Come join us. You, know, you and I and Jane and I were having a conversation, you know, separate conversations about it, but you know, you're wearing your shirt over here, your, your yes, mock-up of uh, you know, Live, Love, Bike, Gross Hill, yes. you know, which is a, a great design. I, I do Thank like you. it. Um, and I know you talked about potentially doing that as you know, a fundraiser or something. Just you're, you're looking at potential ideas for it. Um, I mentioned potentially maybe we can incorporate that into a, like a lazy ride shirt. So that way, if you have lazy ride on the back mm -hmm. of the shirt, you know, in addition to you, you know, yelling like a madman, you know, letting folks know about yeah. the. <laughs> it was fun. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, it was it was a happy yell. It wasn't a mad. It isn't bad, uh, but. It's something that we can discuss. Yes, absolutely. This is if we can do a fundraiser with it, and uh, little logos. I, I think it would work. A little advertising. Absolutely. But thank you for the compliment on the uh, logo. I love that the uh, the bridge is green. That, that denotes right there that this is Gross Hill, a green bridge. <laughs> um, last about the Tour de Eel. Uh, it's it's a fundraiser, correct? You know, what? Do you care to? Yeah, uh, Rotary Club uh, collecting donations and stuff to distribute to different charities. Different That's charities. That's the goal. Okay, so it's not one specifically, just to, you know, no. different charities each year. Okay. I believe local charities. Any other questions or comments on Tour de Eel? When is the date and the time for that? September nineteenth. I think they start at 7 or 8 in the morning and be done about 2 in the afternoon or so. Just check on our website, www.tourdeal.com. I-L-E.com. Let folks know that's the day after Tour Detroit. So mm -hmm. if anyone's going to be riding there, like I will right. be, you know, we can uh, do some last-minute advertising for it as well. Okay. Last item under old business is the Island Fest Summary. So last month we talked a little bit about the Island Fest and how it was success and that there was a lot of public comments. Uh, in between that time and now, Jane was able to compile a, a summary list of the items that were talked about at the uh, Island Fest. I was wondering if everyone had a chance to look that over, if there's anything that we want to uh, you know, publicly talk about right now. Hearing none, we can move on and get out of here. Um, back to the agenda. Um, new business. I've been working at, at SEMCOG, the Southeast Michigan Council of Governments, and as part of my work over there, I've been investigating about which communities have bike share programs. So for those that don't know, bike share is kind of like you know renting a bike but generally you do it for a short period of time. Where you rent a bike, you're gonna rent it for the day or maybe a couple days, and you're gonna take it with you wherever you go. Bike share concept is basically you use the bike for a specific trip. So you might be visiting uh, Grozeal and you pick up a bike and then you say, I'm gonna to ride to the airport. And from the airport, you put the bike away and then you, know, you go to a meeting or you know you, go on your airplane or you visit the alpaca farm or whatever and then later on you can come back and essentially rent a bike again and take it to another location so it's a one-way trip um, so the city of Detroit is going through with their bike share program they have one sponsored by bedrock currently but they're gonna have a much larger one uh, put on by the Detroit downtown partnership that's gonna include all of downtown gonna include midtown uh, off towards um, 
Belle Isle, off towards Mexican Town, and a Cork Town. So that's just one system. I know Ann Arbor has another. So in my research, I learned that you know Wyandotte has a bike share program, Brownstown has a bike share program, and Flat Rock is currently looking at a bike share program, and Trenton has an interest in a bike share program. And since this subject has come up in the past, in, in concept here with uh, BPAC, I thought I'd bring it back to us you know, to let you know about that and let you know as well as I was going to be contacting the Downriver Linked Greenways Initiative, who runs you know, the, the greenways, the, the bike paths within the Downriver area, and asking them, you know, did it ever occur to them maybe about being more of an umbrella organization, potentially sponsoring a bike share for the entire Downriver area? And if that was the case, if they were willing to be looking at it, maybe that's something that uh, Groziel might be interested in being a part of. Because I know in the past, I liked the concept of bike sharing, but I worried about the costs involved. So if the costs were spread apart from a larger organization, maybe it might be something that we could look at. So you know, it's just information for right now. I don't have anything concrete to present you. Um, but you know, I was wondering if you guys had any comments on that, say, hey, this is good, let's look at it more, or I don't think we should be participating in that. You know, the township board you know, wouldn't, uh, you know, th maybe we should you know, hold off on you know, uh, talking about it. So I'll open it up to anybody, but I'll, I'll start with Wally. What would we think we can put up? Jane's trying to hog my time. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm ambivalent to it. I, uh, I don't have a, an objection to it. I don't think that we have gotten ourselves in a position to sell it to this township board yet. And that's, that means if you really believe in it, sell it. Mm -hmm. right? I'm one guy, but there's another six there that some of them will and some of them would not be interested. And, and so I think, why don't, you, why don't you look at it as being the first step in many. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to get a bike share program here this year, number one. Two, we might not get it next year. Mm -hmm. but you, might, you might be able to plant and, and plant enough seeds. And uh, sooner or later when you plant seeds and you water, some of them grow. So, you know, again, I'm, I'm personally ambivalent to it at this point, but don't have any problem with us building our case as starting now. Mm -hmm. is, that, is that a fair? I, I think that's great because, I mean, that's exactly the way I am. Um, I think it's a great, con you know, I'm, I think it's a nice concept, but I wouldn't be pro or against it at this point until I find out more information. Jane, I know you wanted to, to talk. Well, I was just visualizing. We're on an island right now. We're isolated from everyone else. I love it. But they were in Ann Arbor. I have four directions to go to. We only have one direction to go to. So we may not be able to spread as much compared to other areas. Mm -hmm. We may not be as effective. We may want to try maybe two or three or four bikes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as an island itself, I worry about, um, you know, I would assume that most people on the island have access to a bike already. So you know, does it make sense for it to just be a Grozeal thing? That's why the idea of something that was broader, that was inclusive of the rest of the downriver communities appealed to me because you know, we could have somebody that's from out of town come in on an airplane or come in by boat. They don't have a bike with them. Maybe they want to check out different parts of Grozeal, but maybe they want to ride to Trenton or maybe they want to... <laughs> ride to uh, Wyandotte, uh, or you know, maybe even go all the way out to New Boston, which is a little bit farther along the way. So the idea is like there are these different destinations, different kiosks along the, the way, and uh, generally what folks do is they look at the feasibility of something, and they, uh, so there might be an actual study to see what does bike share look like for this specific organization, for this township, for this you know county, whatever that it be, and then from there they figure out Will it, can it make sense, and then is it cost effective? Alan, I know you've talked about bike share in the past. Do you have a, any feelings on this? Well, my thoughts are that um, I'm very pro anything to do with bikes. Um, 
I think we're concentrating on developing a foundation for everything we're doing right now. And once we build a foundation, um, then we can start considering these things. I think it's just too early in the game to start getting involved. Um, we only have so much to give, and if we divide ourselves into um, projects like this, and this is a quite large project, mm -hmm. um, it's just going to take away from us concentrating on building the foundation that we need um, for our program. And we're working hard to build this foundation, and um, we're taking on more things from education to you know, events and um, just maintenance alone. So we, we have our hands full, and I don't think it's appropriate now to even try to take this on because we just we we don't have uh we don't have the manpower we don't have the um the time to do mm -hmm. this um i'd rather focus on the little things we're working on and make them very um exceptional for our community and not worry about the bigger things and once we get this uh, uh foundation built then we can start considering this let let them develop the programs and then and work out the bugs and then if at the right time we think it's um, beneficial for us, then we should consider it. Mm -hmm. I, I share your concerns. <coughs> don't want to spread us thin. I just want to clarify something that I'm not looking for us to do anything up about this. Not asking you know, Grozeal to even look at anything right now. Just to plant the seed of the idea. And then if there was some other organization, for example, the Downriver Link Greenways, which is much larger as far as like their spread of things, um, you know, perhaps there could be another entity that kind of facilitates this. I, you know, I, I agree, it's a very big job, especially when you talk about all the different components of what goes into a successful one. So uh, I understand where you're coming from on that, and I, I will definitely keep that in mind. I, I honestly believe that somebody could work full-time at it and may not even be um, adequate in providing the service that, it, that it'll demand. Um, I think we have an opportunity here on Grozil for an entrepreneur to come in and open a bike rental shop Mm -hmm. And it would do fantastic. It would fit our demographic better than um, the other demographics in those cities because, um, like you say, we're we're almost a closed community, and a bike rental would fit this community better than a one-way rental or a a um, you know a program that might fit their community better. But then I invite anybody to consider that. I mean, it's a great opportunity to start a small mm -hmm. bike rental. Um, I think that um, it would take off and uh, be very successful. It would probably be a seasonal business, but there's a great opportunity for somebody here. And I hope that they, somebody out there considers it. I've considered it myself. That's how I feel about it. Thank you, sir. There is another island a little bit north of us under a big bridge, and they do a lot with bikes, and they're seasonal too. I, I like your idea. Uh, I wonder... Uh, you know, th th I think that the the thing that separates us from them is the varied destinations that they have to go on bikes. We need to develop uh, a popularity for the alpaca farm. We need to develop a popularity for the swimming pool. We need to, to develop a popularity mm -hmm. for riding down Macomb and uh, having an ice cream cone somewhere, you know, down at the bakery. Uh, and that's that's the kind of thing that, that people might want to take a bike on. People that do come in on their boats, many of them you will see having a bike strapped to their bow, which if they knew that a bike was available, they might not do that. It's a pain in the neck to strap a bike to a bow of a boat. So, for example, I, I think you're right. I think I think we take baby steps now. Let's take care of our business, and let's let's do our dreaming little steps. I do think it's possible. I think that one day the system may work for us. But I think we're considering it too early in our life to do this. Um, we've just started, and we have a lot to do. So I'm just trying to focus on doing the things we do as well as we do it. Great comments, sir. Donna, it looked like you had something to say about it. I was just wondering, on the, would that mean that you could take the bikes, you could get the button? bike from Grozeal? It is on. Is it green? Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't. You could take the bike from Grozeal and say if I wanted to one way into Wyandotte, I could take that bike into Wyandotte and leave that bike in Wyandotte. Is that how I'm to understand how this thing works? Yes, yeah. uh, poten potentially. So 
you know, again, each system is a little bit different. I'll give you the example of what's out there in Detroit right now. It's called Zagster. And again, it's, it's put on by, it's, it's paid for by essentially Quicken Loans, a branch of it called uh, Bedrock uh, Management. So it's open to you know, all the employees of Quicken Loans. It's open to tenants of Bedrock Management, as well as Blue Cross Blue Shield and other folks that are sponsoring it, including my organization, SEMCOG. So any of us, you know, we essentially have a pass that we can go out there with a smartphone, mm -hmm. punch in a code, the bike unlocks, we can take it for a ride on the riverfront, we can go wherever, we can take it back to that exact same location we got it from, or we can drop it off at other locations in the downtown area. So like that, there's no time limit on that, it's essentially like a short-term bike rental. Um, in other ways, in you know, other metropolitan areas, it's definitely more you know, utilitarian focus that you might have, uh, you say, 20 minutes, and it's free if you do it within 20 minutes. But then after that, you'll get charged per minute or per half hour. I, I don't, you know, it really depends on the system, but you get charged a fee, which essentially incentivizes you to put the bike back so that way it's back in rotation and other folks can use it. And with a system like that, there is you know, a company that generally manages it or some organization, mm -hmm. and they go around and they essentially rebalance all the locations based on data. Because what you can do with uh, this um, version of bike sharing is uh, you find out the GPS locations, you have a little bit of demographic data, you can find out you know, where people are using it, where they're taking it to, um, so that way you have an idea of how many bikes are needed at each location. But also for organizations, uh, you know, from the company side, a lot of times it's from a um, human resources standpoint, a way of decreasing health costs. So they essentially get a tally of like how many calories are burnt, um, you know, uh, different ways that they're actually saving on their health care uh, by u utilizing the system. So it really depends on who's sponsoring it, what their goals are. Um, and then based on that, you design the system for the best, you know, for, for success within that community. Okay, thank you. Wrong. Aaron. Was on. Um, I'd be interested to see how it's doing in these other communities first. Um, for example, I would expect it to do the best in Wyandotte, and have we heard any thing about how how they feel the program's been going? I have not reached out to them yet. It's actually sponsored by um, the the community bank in Wyandotte. Okay. You know, the New Path, I think, is the, the new name for it. Um, so I haven't reached out to them in my with my SEMCOG hat yet. Um, but it's something that I'm going to be you know, researching a little bit more because you know uh, in my capacity at SEMCOG, I'm helping out different communities, and that's something that they're asking for is you know. What is Community X doing, or you know, what is Windat doing as far as bike share, or you know, what is uh, Warren, for example, uh, you know, GM, the tech center, they are sponsoring a Zagster program as well. So there's all diff uh, there's all different ways that it can be done. I don't have all the information yet. Okay, I I just I would be interested to hear that first, and if it is successful in some of the other downriver communities, um, I agree with your idea of maybe having a large <coughs> umbrella organization. It's not something we would take on, mm -hmm. um, but if Downriver Link Greenways or uh, another organization like that uh, wanted to sponsor it, then we could. Take it in terms of I kind of agree with Aaron. Let's see how the other communities do. Uh, Detroit. Uh, Trenton, Wyandotte, see how, how it works for them, give them a year or so. I do like the bike rental thing uh, also here, if we can get somebody to open up. I always wanted a bike rental uh, on the island. Uh, this past weekend I had family in, from New York. Nobody had their bikes, so none of them could join me on the lazy ride. But if there was a bike rental here, it would have been okay, or even a share program, it would have also worked. But let's, uh, the cost with the share program in the other communities, let's Take a back, uh, somewhat of a back seat, but watch it very carefully and see how it works. And if it works, let's jump on board. Great. It's something that we can do in the future. So as far as consensus, it sounds like people are somewhat interested in it, definitely have concerns about costs, about you know, both financial costs, but also um, you know, human capital costs, you know, with us actually managing it. 
and that we need, we need to find out more details and see how it's actually working in other communities. So, uh, yes, Jane. I have three then. You are talking about your family from New York couldn't yes. go. You are talking about your family from New York that could not go biking. Have, have you heard for. of spinlister.com? Spin. Oh. There's a I lot have of a things bike waiting to be rented out. So it's an, another idea. Use a spinlister.com. Oh, I didn't know there spin was. Spin what? Spinlister. Spinlister.com. Okay. I will post it on Facebook All for right. other people to look at. All Two, right. like Aaron was saying, the umbrella. Ideally, same brand company would be a good idea that so they can work together. Mm -hmm. And three, when I went to Florida, one concern was if you want to rent it, do they have age limit? You have to be 18 and above. What about kids? Mm -hmm. It's something you need to consider about, too. Mm -hmm. So have you used SpinLister yourself? Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I have my bike. What's my daughter's bike. She outgrown it. Anybody who wants to rent a bike, look at SpinLister.com. Okay. Would you say it's more... Are you familiar with, like, Airbnb or other stuff like that where basically... It's, you, know, you, you can rent a bike, you can rent your house, your car, your surfboard, your uh, kayak. They do that kind of stuff. Interesting. Good to know. Wow. I want to rent a pontoon boat, out. so uh, I'm <laughs> checking it out. <laughs> a pontoon check it out. boat, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. It'd be a lot cheaper than owning one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only going to use it once or twice this summer. I'll rent one. There yeah. you go. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that info. And again, I don't want to make it seem that I'm pushing this on anybody or that it, doing it just for the sake of saying that we have a bike share program. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, is it something that would fit a need that we have on the island? And if that could be met through the private sector, through rental, or through spin lister or something like that, that's great. Um, and I appreciate everyone's comments on this. It was a very productive conversation. We had a lot of information here just now. I thought it was going to be quick, but... It was Very good. Good, good talk. Um, the next item will be quick this time. Um, I've talked to you in the past about the Iron Bell Trail. That's the trail that the governor is uh, spearheading. Basically, it's routing uh, folks from the western side of the UP in Ironwood, uh, Michigan, down to Belle Isle in the city of Detroit. Two routes, one that's biking, one that's primarily hiking. We're on the hiking portion. So there is a meeting coming up uh, in a, a few weeks here where they're asking all of the people that are on this route, the Iron Bell Trail, that have existing facilities, which includes Grozeal, um, to be there just to talk about ways of marketing the trail and marketing communities. So you know, I can be there at a SEMCOG capacity, but if there's other folks that want to come from you know, a Grozeal capacity, I highly encourage them to be there. It's just another way to try and you know, market Grozeal and tell them about all the fun things that we're already doing. Um, additionally, I do have brochures on the uh, Iron Bell Trail, so I'll pass a couple out to everyone over here. And uh, I have extras, so I will put them in um, downstairs, so that way any residents that are coming in to pay a bill or such, they can grab additional information about the Iron Bell Trail. When is that meeting? Um, the actual date is escaping me right now, but I will send you an email about it. Thank you. Well, it looks like this trail will be larger than the Appalachian. 6,000. Wow, miles snowmobile. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. It's something I recently found out that you know, Michigan is the trail state. When you take all the bike trails, all the hiking trails, all the snowmobile trails, all the equestrian trails, um, ORV trails, uh, we have more than any other um, you know, state in the entire country. And so you know, what a great way to kind of highlight that to basically route folks on all of these trails, fill in the gaps, so that way folks can either take a really long trip all themselves at one shot or visit a little bit you know, at a time, maybe, you know, once a year taking on a couple miles or a couple hundred miles and showcasing all the different communities across Michigan that have something unique to offer, including Grozeal. Do 
Any other questions, comments? Okay. Moving on, uh, last month we talked about per, uh, path surveys, basically looking at the driveways and intersections along the path, talking about potentially reducing signage, as well as looking for safety concerns. An example, you know, Wally had mentioned was uh, you know, a red, uh, no, no turn on red at um, Meridian and Macomb. So um, I did not send out any assignments on that, and Aaron is passing something out here. I'm not sure, Aaron. Did you uh, do any assignments yourself, or did you did you want to talk about this? Um, sure. I this is by no means one of the beautiful brochures that Jane puts together. You might need to put your glasses on for it. I can send you the electronic copy. Um, it's the first one is the map we had talked about um, dividing the path into sections. So I did divide it into six sections. I realize it's hard to see with the colors, but if you turn on the back in text, it'll say what all the sections are. So I thought each of us, um, while, I, while I get a, a break from this, unless he wants to join in and take a section and help somebody else out, but I only made six sections. I never realized that I got a break. But uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, So uh, I, it doesn't matter to me who takes which section, but I thought maybe we could be the owners of them um, when we're reviewing trails. I have a map. On one side. Sorry, there were two. There's a there's one sheet. It has a map on the front, and then on the back, it has the notes to it. Then there's another sheet that's a spreadsheet. Okay. So, and we we don't have to decide right now, um, but there are six sections. So I thought each of us could take one mm -hmm. um, and divide the work a little bit. And then on the spreadsheet, I went through. Um, I rode the paths and looked at all the signs or maybe maybe all the signs. I only did one pass through, so I was hoping this would be a, a good jumping off point. And I put, if I thought they needed to be removed, if we should keep them, um, there were a few places I thought we could maybe add them, but that was very few. They were mostly remove. Um, I did not do the school pass. Those are the only two that I didn't do. As far as I know, those don't have any signs on them. Is that, so the one by the high school, middle school, and the one by Meridian. One has. Okay, I, I didn't think that they did. Okay. So those were the two that you didn't do? Those are the two I didn't do. I did include those in um, our sections, though, okay. because those are something we should look at for maintenance purposes and things like that. Um, but when I did the review of the signs, I did not do those. Okay. Um, so you see there's the horse mill path. Um, if you're traveling from east to west, those are the different signs, Meridian, the Grow, and then South Point Path. Thank you so much for doing this because this is essentially what I was going to be asking us to do. Um, I was going to ask you know, for you know, people to claim assignments as well as, if needed, uh, a smaller group you know, talk about what the spreadsheet needed to be. So since you've done this already, you know, I thank you for your time there, and I think it's a great uh, you know, starting point here. Um, and since it is you know, pretty much exhaustive, I, I think it's great to you know, look at this and then basically have us you know, kind of check it and say, do we agree with it or not, as opposed to starting over. Um, and just commenting on the school paths, I know that there isn't, like you're saying, there isn't any signage. But on the lazy ride, for example, you know, we had a, quite a few people coming through. And where the path, I guess, sort of starts or ends, depending on you know, where you're, start, you're traveling from, but basically the parking lot at the uh, um, middle school, there are some fence posts that serve as bollards, and that's an example of a safety concern that you might want to include within the spreadsheet because fixed bollards can you know, cause issues if people collide with them, um, especially you know those type that are less visible. Um, so thanks again, and I guess I will start off, and I would like to take um, you know Meridian. The, you know, the orange section, basically, horse mill to ferry. If anyone else has, you know, wants to volunteer right now, feel I'll free to. The purple section. The closest to me. Okay, I I don't think I'm clear as to what what we're doing though. Are we? Are we going to see if we do we agree with keep or add or remove? 
that's yeah. what we're doing because you basically did the whole island, right? Wow. Okay. Agree with as well as add things too. If you if, if you think that she missed something. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll do Grow Road path west to east. Is that, well, Al took the purple, so that's like oh, that's South Al. Point oh, you're and Sorry, well, the, blue, the blues on this side. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so Donna, do you want to do the blue section? I'll do the blue section, yes. That would take us over to, to about the Treffin. Treffin. Yeah, I, I wrote on the back, so the, the blue section, section five, is the meridian path south of the meridian elementary school path. Okay. So you don't have to do the school path, but anything south of that, and then Grow Road path east of Meridian Road. Okay. You can do the larger one on Meridian Path north to south. Called it. How about the uh, the green one, or the yellow one? I don't have that map with me. I passed it. Oh, thank you. one I can uh, if we don't have enough people to do it I can do them both green and yellow well the yellow one goes down to ferry is it here yeah yep I can do from ferry to grow how's that no okay I'll take the red section horse mill and then meridian up to Voight Aaron, since you did this before, you know, if you want to set this out, I could take that section too, if you want to, or I could take the, the yellow section if somebody else wanted to do the, the red one. I'm just wondering, you know, since you've done so much already, I'd like to kind of spread the work out, and especially since you've kind of looked at it, it's good to have a, a fresh set of, set of eyes. eyes. Okay, but in, um, so after you look at it this time, then I can yeah. take it again just for in yeah. the future when we're doing reviews and we could probably even rotate mm -hmm. um, maybe each year we take a look at it and then after maintenance is done we rotate just to get a, a fresh set of eyes mm -hmm. and then maybe you know, even in the future you know we can go out together and kind of take a look at this or have some pictures and bring it back and have a, a group conversation about these so that way you know, we're seeing it from multiple perspectives I, I think this is a great mm -hmm. list and thank you and I commend you for Forget being ambitious and, and starting it. Uh, Brian, if I may, this is a great list. I'm impressed. But as you said, doing something as a group, do we know anybody that has a like a, a large van with a lot of seats in it and all of us go at one time <laughs> and maybe check this all out together? I mean, it's a thought if anybody knows fight. anybody with a Kennedy van like that. Flashbacks of a roads committee meeting. <laughs> <laughs> the, the roads committee does exactly the same thing. They do take a look at the roads and sections on the island but once a year they all hop into that white van and they drive all of the major roads on Gros Hill and they have a rolling discussion as they're moving through the, the community and that that vehicle is available to you well, right. all right that sounds great I was thinking of somebody else but that would be a great van yeah thank you Thank you, no, Al. Um, this is a bike commission. <laughs> okay, I think we Alan, should all ride our bikes. <laughs> well, there you go. We can all ride our bikes for it. We just pick a date. I'll also take the uh, trail between the schools if you want to put me on that list. Okay, which one am I doing? Am I doing yellow or green? You don't have to do both. They're in. Okay. So. Well, if she needs it, I thought we didn't have enough people to do this, but if she wants one of them. We have. There's six sections, oh, and there's seven sorry, of us. Right. Oh, that's okay. So if we, um, uh, if Wally doesn't feel like taking a section, he doesn't have to. Fortunately, I'm stuck with all of the sections when you really get down yes. to yes. it. Yes, yes. And then fortunately for, mm -hmm. for yes. us, all right? <laughs> Thank you, Wally. Oh. Lucha, sir. Okay. Jane, what, yes. Wally's section? Well, I think, Bob, did you take? Uh, well, I took two. Uh, I'll take, I, I can take the yellow, and Jane can have the other one on uh, Meridian. How's that? Me green. Okay. Um, okay. And just to clarify, the yellow is that section of Meridian from Ferry to Grosiel Parkway, but it also includes the high school and middle school path. There's a yellow square up there, and um, it says it in the text oh. on the back. And then the green one, and that, that's the reason they're so small. And the green one, um, the Meridian from Grosiel Parkway, goes down to 
uh, the Meridian Elementary path. So it includes the path right by the elementary school as well. Meridian. So I'm just going to repeat this back to make sure I'm, you know, everyone's on the same page. I will be taking basically the Meridian path from Bridge down to Ferry as well as taking Horse Mill. Okay, I will be taking red and orange. Bob will be taking yellow, which includes the middle school, high school path. Jane will be taking green, which includes um, Meridian Elementary path and like the, the, the ball fields area. Donna will be taking the blue, which is grow and Meridian. And Al will be taking the purple, which is grow and South Point. We're not, we're not focusing on side road, just the uh, bike path itself, right? Okay. I'd say focus that. If you see okay. something else that, you know, in your travels, feel free to you know, do it as a side note, but don't be seeking it out. I guess one example, like what you might be talking about is the, the ferry trail. Um, because I know that Rob, when he did this last time, um, he included that because of uh, a lot of people riding the ferry trail and coming out on ferry and that it was a, a kind of a, a blind spot. So something like that, if you come across it, feel free to document it. Yeah. But I, I think we just chunk this off as just the path for right now and then in a future time we can look at other streets that people might be using for biking or other trails. Great. Thank you, everyone. With that, go into reports and closing. Is there any other upcoming rides or runs to publicize? Hearing none, Wally, is there anything else that you'd like to include as part of your township liaisons report? Just a uh, couple of comments. Number one, as you drive around the island, you will realize that there is still road work continuing. There's a lot of concrete patching work being done in some of the subdivisions. Uh, the finished chip seal roads are done. They're done, they're painted, and I think they look great, frankly. Uh, thoroughfare Bridge, the wood repairs begin tomorrow. With all of Mr. Pfeiffer's insurance documents and things are in place at the township, and he begins his work tomorrow, uh, unless there's a weather problem in which he would start the day after. But it sounds like he's got a good day to start. Mm -hmm. uh, Al's Asphalt is working with rains on a a date for a pre-construction meeting, you know, kickoff meeting. And I anticipate seeing that started before the end of the month, which is probably two months faster than we've ever done it before. And uh, Els, as I understand, very, very energetic about doing this. And they got a good reputation. Mm -hmm. I, I'm looking forward to a much better outcome than we've had in the past. Bricks at the fountain. We had a, I shared a story earlier about some children being allowed to take the bricks and use them as building blocks as they were taking them apart by the fountain. It's been corrected, number one. Number two, I suspect that's where one of those bricks got broken. And, and more than that, uh, we had a very clear understanding today with Mr. Moore do and he says he will finish it the border is going to be smaller the bricks are going to line up the issue that he had with the bricks which is an issue he should have brought up earlier but didn't and I'm not trying to rag on him in public but uh, if you go over to the to the fountain and take a look at the concrete base that it's poured on or that it sets on it's not a square it's not a rectangle it's a rhomboid all four sides are different lengths. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult to line up square bricks to a to a imperfect pad. So he, he's figured out a way, we figured out a way, we're going to build to the perimeter of a, sh of a smaller square and fill in with cut bricks where the, where the gaps, and they're going to have to be custom cut piece by piece. Okay. Says they have them done by Saturday, and I'm going to take him at his word. Is that inc uh, increasing the cost of the no. installation? No. We haven't paid them yet. Uh, the airport's going to get a new runway, guys, ladies. And uh, Preliminary work has begun. We started talking about it at the last township board meeting. Uh, 
that's going to be a total rip out and a total replacement with a with a 75 foot long asphalt runway to replace the 100 foot concrete based runway which we have uh, it's a magnificent project uh, we're getting 95 percent of it paid for by the FAA. Cost to us will be, you know, they pay 95%, we pay 5%, and our 5% is estimated to be $300,000. So uh, the reason I'm bringing it up to you is that recognize that when you take that much concrete out, and that much dirt out, when you bring that much asphalt in, there's a lot of trucks going back and forth. Be aware that they're going to run Grosiel to Meridian and Meridian down. about the, um, you know, the airport runway when it's finished do you th what do you think about an inaugural event where people can actually walk on it well they're driving hot and they're driving hot cars on it you know we've used it for promotional events with uh, fast vehicles and I don't think that there's a problem with that let's, let's just put it in the back of your head but this is this is probably a year down the road before you'll see a new runway walk and cycle it Bicycle drag races. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lady ride. Lady ride. Jane would win. Jane would win. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Wally. That's all I have. As far as my report, I say first of all, thank you, Aaron, for handling the uh, the, the brick issue. So you know, we did have that one brick that broke, and you were able to be you know, very quickly expedite. Um, you know, conversation with Polar Engraving and get that new brick, you know, free of charge for us. So you know, thank you for that. Uh, secondly, you know, I did uh, take uh, Mr. Urban's comments about uh, the, the loose gravel and, and told DPS about that. And I uh, you know they are taking it into consideration, but you know, with all the um, chip sealing being done, I don't see it being you know a problem in the near future anyway. But you know, regardless, you know, I just want to let folks know that we did carry that on. With that, my, that concludes my report. If anyone else has anything else? Well, I know you talked about you know, more public comment later on. This nope. will be your last chance. Well, I made my comment. I, it was St. Thomas Lutheran Church. And I do have one thing to report, and I'm very glad to report this, that our bike racks are now installed. We have one here at Township Hall, and we have one installed at uh, four cor I'm sorry, not four corners at Macomb Commons. And um, John, our lead maintenance technician from the DPW, got um, the two guys on it today, Jerry and Raymond, and they got them installed. And I think the, the spots are wonderful, and you can access them from either side of the rack. So I wanted to thank them very much for their time and efforts. Thank you, too, Donna. No problem. I, if I may, uh, real quick, uh, I discussed this over the weekend, forgot about it. Uh, the DPW, DPS, they do a phenomenal job with keeping a bike path clean in the winter and summer. And Brian and I talked about this. Uh, that's part between the middle school on East River all the way down to Manchester. It's not a sidewalk. I look at it as a bike share thing. If we could reach, yes, if we could reach out to them and ask them if they could sweep that because I've tried to use it. I know if you're coming northbound, you're going with the flow, against the flow of traffic, but you cannot ride your bike in that area between the white line and the grass. It's, there's so much debris there, and I, and I know these guys do a phenomenal job. If we could reach out to them and maybe they could sweep it once for us and uh, mm -hmm. make it easy. Is that the, like the sidewalk that's up on the grass area? Is it's, it it's, it's, it's part of the road. It's like a share path oh, it's part of the road it's on the west side of east river from manchester all the way up to the middle school and it's wide enough to be a bike lane it's actually wider than our bike lanes but there's so much debris from over the years yeah. you know and i just thought if we could reach out to them and ask them if they could sweep that it's a thought yeah i mean it's an thank idea. you I mean, we just had uh i noticed on my street that the street sweepers came by was a week oh. or two ago mm -hmm. so we do have the equipment i will uh either myself we or don't Wally have the equipment uh, what's that oh, we, we don't, don't have the equipment that's rented oh okay well we'll, we'll look into the it next time yes thank you 
Hearing no other uh, thing else, can I get a motion for adjournment? Seeing, seeing as uh, that I don't get a piece of the bike path individually, I make a motion to adjourn the entire thing. <laughs> second. Who do we have second? Donna? Second. Great. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Uh, we are closed at 835. Thank you, everyone. Walk, bike, and drive safe. <laughs> Great meeting. <laughs>